Oh, happy days. <laughs> you know what I'm like with a little bit of unboxing? Uh, let me just make sure I've got that turned off. So we've got a few things here um, today that we've got to unbox. Well, I thought, why not do one together? I mean, I've got a stack of stuff here that I thought I'd go through. Um, I am going to make separate videos of all of these <clears throat> once they're all um, have been unboxed and I'm taking them away and, you know, giving them proper reviews. But I thought I'd give you a look at what I've got. Uh, we can unbox it all together. Um, and I'll sort of talk about what, you know, uh, what I'm going to use it for and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing. People are saying, <clears throat> what else did you do? What did you do this time? Uh, you have the Tamron already. Uh, hey, David. From So let's have a look anyway on the chat. Oh, I've got to move this over, actually, to make sure that this works. So let me move this. Where are we? Oh, it's that way, actually. Let me make it smaller. Oop, about there. And bring that in about there. I'm just going to give it a few minutes, guys, for people to log on because this is totally unscheduled. Um, this stuff just all came, so I thought I'd uh, talk to you about it now. So who's in anyway? I'm going to give it five minutes uh, and then we'll start, guys. But... Uh, We'll just have a chat while everyone's here. Eli's uh, put something there. I'm not sure what he retracted. Uh, also, he's just saying, hey, David. Um, Ruben's saying, g'day, David, as well. Also, how's it going? Really good, actually. Um, you know I love unboxing videos. Did I bring my knife in? Yes, I did. Um, Barry said, hello. Altric saying, hey. Eli says, what did you do this time? Uh, you'll find out soon. Uh, Sad said, have you the Tamron already? Yes, it's uh, right here. Um, Shova says, hey David from California. Reuven says, new gear is always great. That's why I thought I'd unbox it. I was going to do it in the kitchen on my own. And I thought, why not share it with you guys and we can go through it together. Uh, and I can show you what I've got. Um, new gear is always great. Mike said, okay David, what you got? Sam said, always up to watch some uh, someone open up new toys. Chris said, hello David, I hope you've bought flowers. <laughs> Oh, I love it. My 24 GM is coming next week. Oh, I love that. Right here. I love this lens. Beautiful. Uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, in trouble again, I see. No, I'm not in trouble, actually. This is all free, guys. Um, Rick said, hello, David. And Thomas says, g'day, David. Uh, what have you done this time? <laughs> David, your wife must not be home. She's not, but she wouldn't care anyway because I haven't paid for any of this. Um, wait, where did you order the Tamron from? I don't see it even in the search, uh, their own website. Uh, this is from Tamron Australia, guys. So, um, Seabird said, hi, David. What can you recommend for A7R3 cage other than small rig? Um, I really only like the small rig stuff because I used to use other stuff that was out there. I mean, I did other reviews a while back. Um, I just like small rig stuff, and, and look, I'm lucky in the fact that they send me the stuff for nothing, and I've got a stack of it here. But if they didn't, I honestly would still pay for it, and I have done that previously. There's some parts of small rig stuff that I actually have purchased myself. Um, but they're the only ones I recommend at this stage because I find that they're reasonably priced and they're so well made. So, yeah, probably just small rig. And I'm going to unbox a stack of small rig stuff for you uh, in a minute, actually. Michael's here as well. G'day, Michael. Fred said, hey, David, patiently waiting for my Tamron. Sue Burt said, uh, hi, David, what can you recommend for the A7R3? Ca oh, I've read that one a minute ago. Um, I don't find them expensive, though, Sue Burt. That's the thing. I find them pretty good uh, for the prices, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Stuart said, uh, how are you, pal, from the UK? Fuji shooter, so be gentle, it's early. <laughs> You are, it is early for you, isn't it? Photo by Ken said, hello, David. A good morning in Sweden at the moment. Just got home from a sunrise photography. Oh, that sounds like it'd be fantastic. Hey, David, kind of like Christmas. I know it is a bit Gary, isn't it? Um, Rick said, why is your wife behind you? <laughs> Don't say that. Why is your wife behind you with her arms crossed? <laughs> I know she's still at work. I should have bought, you know what, the other thing is too, I've bought an iPad 12.9 inch as well. I came home with that. When did I come home with that? Um, I think it was two days ago. I came home with that and I had to tell Kerry I bought that. 
Um, I love that thing though. That that is unbelievable. I should have brought that in and done and showed that as well. But yes, I've just bought a a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Love it. Um, what else have we got? Rick retracted a message. I'm not sure what that was. Malay says, what is your comments about Moza Aircross versus the AK2000? Well, I haven't used, uh, Malay, I haven't used the new Moza Aircross 2. So I have to say that and, and I haven't used it. Out of the two of them, I prefer the AK2000 for the controls. So if I had to, and look, I paid for the Moza Aircross. I didn't pay for the AK2000. But it doesn't matter, I'll tell you the truth anyway, and I think I prefer, I, I like the AK2000 for the controls uh, on that gimbal. Uh, the new Moza Aircross 2 may be better, but I haven't tried one yet, so I can't tell you how good that will be. My favorite gimbal is still the Moza Air 2 though, that is still my favorite gimbal that I've used, it's just heavier, uh, but that's superb. But my second favorite, if you want to travel a little bit lighter, would be the AK2000, uh, it's great. Um, Eli says, it's 12 a.m. here and I have a flight in a few hours. I'll stay and watch, though. Um, I found that small rig stuff is well designed and very affordable. It just works. And I, I agree, it does. And I'm not just saying that because they send me the stuff. Because, like I said, I also pay for things. But lately, they've been sending me stuff. So I'm not going to complain uh, because it is it's great stuff. Uh, the iPad Pro is great. Yeah, I know. I'm loving it, Eli. I've bought a stack of apps on it. I'm going to try and start doing video editing and... Um, photo editing and stuff like that. I'm gonna try and use it more than getting a laptop. I'm gonna see how it goes for a while and I'll tell you as I uh, go on this sort of learning uh, thing how it all goes. Um, House says, but the Tamron site here doesn't have any selling options unless they don't sell it here in the US directly. It just says find a dealer. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, all right, guys, so let's get started. What time is it anyway? It's, uh, oh, did I start that thing? No. Uh, so we'll start off with the um, Tamron, eh? We'll unbox that first, I think. So, the um, let me go full screen, and then you can. I'll come back to the. Um, I'll come back to the thing shortly. The questions, but so you can keep firing away. Um, so this is the Tamron seventeen to twenty eight. Uh, I'm going to um, take this out. I think on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to go up to the Grampians here in Victoria, which is a beautiful location. Uh, I think I might do it Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and I'm going to use it more as a landscape lens and do some video of um, on the gimbal and stuff. So I should be able to give you a good review of how this goes in not a portrait situation. The other one when I reviewed this was a portrait type of review. Um, so I'm going to use it now for more of a uh, landscape uh, on a gimbal and I'll do some of the beautiful scenery and stuff like that for you. Um, so we can have a look at how this performs there. Um, so it'll be a little bit different. Just remember, I'm not a landscape shooter, so I don't know what the images will turn out like, but I'm confident that the, the images are, are going to look lovely. So let's un unbox it anyway, and we'll have a look. So in the box, what do we have? So... In the box, I should have done an overhead camera, so I could have done it like that. Obviously, the uh, instructions um, are all there. Uh, and then it's just basically the lens, because I remember I unboxed this when I got that one from Tamron Australia, uh, that sneak peek one. Let me just see if I can get that out. And then I'll show you compared to the size of the Tamron 28 to 75, and also the G Master 24. So it'll give you an idea about the size that this thing is. So. Uh, let me take this out of this little pouch. I'll do the I'll do the Jared poll and hang on. Mmm, sniff test. Mmm, nice. So this is the lens itself. Every time I touch this, I just can't get over. Um, <laughs> Lomo saying, David, it's twelve a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> It's only 2.14 here, Loma. Um, so this is the lens itself. Uh, let me just put on the uh, sun hood there. I think it might go the other way. Oh, no, that's it. It does clip in. Uh, I say, like, the interesting thing is, like I've said, they, they do have that uh, different feel to, say, the G Master lenses, but I've found them to be the most... Um, well, easiest to look after, because if you look at my other one, 
which is this one. Now, just check this out. I'm gonna show you something, all right? Check this. Let me see if I can get it to focus. It's always on face to text, so that's the problem. Check this. Now, this works perfectly. I have to say that the Sony lens does work perfectly, but this has so many scratches and everything else all over it, right? My Tamron, which I treat exactly the same, has nothing on it. Like, it looks brand new. So don't be uh, put off by when you see reviewers say that the materials aren't as nice as what the G Master lens is, uh, because I've found it's absolutely outstanding. Um, they, they seem to hold up very well. Now, this is the 17 to 28. This is the 28 to 75. You can see that uh, the 17 to 28 is a little bit smaller than what the Tamron 28 to 75 is. Um, and the 28 to 75 was, um, it's been one of my favorite lenses that I've had on a gimbal, but I, th I think this one um, is, now this isn't mine, by the way, this is Tamron Australia's, I've got to send this back uh, eventually. Um, so this one, um, I think will probably be the best gimbal lens that's available for Sony. So th this is gonna be incredible as, uh, as a gimbal lens, and I've already used it extensively when I did that sneak peek. But I think if you're after a gimbal lens, it's 2.8, very, very light, really um, great focus. Uh, and I think the 17 mm uh, to the 28 is the perfect focal length uh, for what I'd like to use on a gimbal. So I think this is um, a fantastic lens, but it's a 67 millimeter filter thread, which also is really nice because it's exactly the same as the 24 GM. Uh, if you want to see the difference of the 24 GM, um, so that that's the GM here. You can see that they uh, they're sort of they're pretty close in size, really. Uh, there's not much difference. The the 24 GM is remarkable how small they've made that one actually, being a 1.4. Um, but to have a lens that you can have at 16 to 35. Uh, the Tamron, it's outstanding, and I've already showed that being used for portraiture, and I was very, very happy with the results. So stay tuned um, for the results that I'll show you, some landscape stuff and things like that, more how you'd use this if you were traveling and things. So I will review this fully in the coming days. So that's the Tamron lens. Like I said, I'm gonna start reviewing that this week. Let me just put this down. All right, next thing. Um, this one here is, this is going to be so much fun to use. I, I can't wait to actually have a look at this. So this is the Sign Eye. Now, this little device, I'm going to take it out and I'll show you. Um, so this is the little device inside the box. Um, and again, I'll review this as well. This has been sent to me as well, so I haven't paid for any of these. Um, like I said, I'm always honest with you guys. Uh, not going to lie to you. Um, why this appeals to me, when the guy contacted me about this, I didn't know what this was. And um, when he told me what it was, I thought, wow, th this really would be good for the way that I shoot. Because I shoot um, fusion, um, I can set a camera up. Say, for instance, I'm doing weddings and I want to put a camera uh, in another location, which is a second camera, and then I could be filming somewhere else. This will wirelessly go up to 100 meters and send the video that I've put from that camera to my iPhone so I can check what's going on with that video. And it has things like scopes, it has everything on there so you can be checking exposure, all things like that. Uh, but stay tuned for the review. Like I said, I haven't used it, I haven't set it up or anything yet. Uh, it's just been delivered, but I really like the idea of having this. Uh, it will do, I think it does up to 1080, 60 or something, or it might be 1080, 30, I'm, I can't remember. Um, but does it say on the box? Yeah, it does 1080p, it just says. It goes up to 100 meters. Uh, and also, I think it also can use LUTs looking at that as well. But like I said, I love the, the thought of this is really appealing to me being a Fuji photographer. Uh, that's a Fuji. <laughs> believe I just said Fuji um, being a hybrid photographer that was funny um, so stay tuned for this little review I think it's it's amazing and basically you get like a little adapter and then it just sits on top of the camera you could put it on a, a cage 
uh, or even in the hot shoe if you wanted to stick it on the hot shoe. And then, like I said, it will go back 100 meters. And, that, and that's incredibly far. And it seems to hold up from the reviews that I've looked at um, for 100 meters. So it, it seems to be that it's, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's 5G wireless. Uh, it's a 5G wireless transmitter as well. So it's meant to be pretty, um, pretty strong. So I'm really looking forward to trying that to see how it goes. Um, and maybe even like use it on an iPad or use it on my iPhone and check it to that. Uh, I, I suppose it probably does uh, Android as well. There probably is an app for that as well. It doesn't say. Um, but this is the Asun, I think it's called, and it's the Sinai. So stay tuned. Um, stay tuned for that review, uh, which will be coming up, and I'll show you how I'd like to use it uh, and things like that. So that's that one. Well, then I also got this box. Now, this is all from Small Rig. Um, let me just check with you what you're saying anyway before we go any further. Because um, I'd like to know before I go too far down. Um, GM is the gold master. Langston says, interesting difference to the wear and tear. Yeah, I know. that. That's the thing, Langston. I really was surprised at how well the Tamrons um, wear. And a lot of people have said the same thing to me. Like when you you know you look at that and how that's weird compared to what the you know the Sony lens has, which have had the same amount of um, punishment really. Like I don't treat the Tamron lens any different, but whatever the coating is or whatever they're doing on the lens, um, they're excellent. Uh, really are excellent. So when you see reviews talk about the build quality. I've had that since new now, so I've had that over 12 months as well, and really there's not a mark on it, um, which is incredible. So the build quality is very, very good on those Tamron lenses. Um, Photomix said, it makes no sense because there's nothing gold on the lenses. Yeah, there's not, is there really? <laughs> um, Brian says, is the Sigma 12 to 24 2.8 for gimbal? Trying to decide if I should keep my pre-order. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to get, I am going to get those Sigma lenses for a review. I, I was told today that I might get them in around about four weeks. Um, and I'll get one lens at a time, I believe. So I'll let you know when I see them. I'm not sure about the weight and stuff. What I love about, um, what I love about this though is, is the weight factor. If you're talking about gimbal, I think this is probably the best lens you can buy in the market. And I'm only talking from my experience of using it. It was outstanding. And um, the focal length was great. Um, you know, I could go from 17 to 28. I wouldn't want to go much wider than 17 anyway on a gimbal. Um, and the, it was 2.8. Autofocus was brilliant. The images were sharp and crisp and colorful. Uh, like I said, I still think out of the lenses that I've used, this is the best lens you can buy for a gimbal. Uh, the 24mm G Master is also very good, but you haven't got, uh, you know, the, the range like 17 to 28 like you have on this. So that, that's amazing in itself. So I think this is the perfect gimbal lens. Um, Travis said, uh, the Sony Zeiss lenses barrels are horrible. I own the 55 1.8 and it's very easy to damage. I know, I don't. I wish they'd change their material or something, Thomas, I agree with you. Um, I've got the 55 on this one, I think. My 55 is not bad, but it still is, uh, let me just see if I can hold my face. It still is marked. I mean, if I compare it to how the Tamron lenses um, have performed, um, the Tamrons are amazing. That they really are. Um, Photomix said, "Where were we?" Um, that's probably why they never say it aloud, and they only say in the master. Oh, you're talking about the G Master, yep. Uh, missed the notification. Well, there really wasn't one. I only put it out and then went live more or less straight away, Jamie. So that might be why uh, you haven't had much of a notification. Notification. Um, also said hanging out uh, much with Aaron, um, Fedemiak, Supernamic said uh, Wizard Master Upgrade G, I'm not sure what that means. Guys like the video, thank you Lomo, yeah more people, uh, if you can guys give me a thumbs up because it would mean more people will see that I'm live. Mark said how does it hook up, are you talking about that Mark, I think, talking about the Sinai, I've got a feeling that 
Because um, like I said, I haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, I think it's got, uh, I think it's USB-C. So it looks like it's USB-C here to charge, but then you'll have HDMI. So what you must have is it must connect via the HDMI to the camera, and then it goes wirelessly back 100 meters to um, your iPhone. Uh, so that's the way it will connect. So I'd say inside here, let me just open this up and I'll tell you. Yeah, uh, you get in the box, you get, there's a HDMI cable, which is obviously to connect to your camera. Uh, and then there's the little um, adapters that will attach it onto your top of your camera. Uh, they're just a little hot shoe adapter. There's a USB-C cable, USB-C to A, uh, and there's also a USB-C to, um, I think it's an, ah, uh, oh, that must be the um, adapter for, um, I think that's for, you know, I think that's just the small USB, whatever they are, I can't remember the name. So it comes with a few adapters anyway, but I believe it just atta attaches with that um, HDMI, from here into the camera and then it goes wirelessly back to your camera up to 100 meters. And apparently the quality from what I've seen is really good. Um, uh, so let's keep going down on the thing. <laughs> I'm laughing, Michael saying we knew David is a Fuji <laughs> infiltrator. I love it. Delta Dave said G designation is carryover from an Alta and those lenses. Uh, have gold trim. Oh, thanks, Dave. Um, Langston said, ha, that's an interesting bit, Delta Dave. Um, where are we? That will come in handy uh, for the camera in the back of the church. Yeah, it would. And that's what I'm thinking about that device. Um, because, uh, like I said, I'm often working on my own or just with Kerry or whatever, I can set up another camera in another location and I can make sure everything's okay. And that to me is brilliant because I work on my own in that regard, uh, doing fusion, being able to check what that camera's recording is brilliant. Uh, and I think that's a really outstanding thing for me. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying it actually. Um, Langston says, um, oh, Jerry says, I've totally abused my Tamron and it looks like new. I know Jerry, I, that they are so good. The materials they use on those Tamron lenses are so good. Uh, they really are. Um, Langston says, I'm bummed I didn't get to work my Rowan uh, SC in today's shoot. Oh, you got one, did you? Uh, I may have to go delete my comments about flashy gear. It does it does make a difference, apparently. Um, the G-Master lenses have really good coating at, that doesn't scratch. The Zeiss lenses seem to scratch a ton, though. Oh, thanks for sharing that, Eli. The new Sigma 35 1.2 interests me. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get all those lenses and test them, Mark. So stay tuned for that, uh, and I'll give you some honest reviews uh, when I can get them. I was told today about a month away, um, but I'm also gonna get an SLR magic lens as well, very, very soon, uh, that I'll test for you as well. Um, Langston says, any downside to those lenses for photography? Which lenses, uh, Langston? Um, no, well, there's certainly no downsides for the 17 to 28, no. I mean, I've showed you the images I caught uh, I took of Rebecca. It was brilliant. Very, very sharp. Great focus, great color. I couldn't see any chromatic aberrations. Um, no, so I don't, there's no downside at all. Um, Vatimir says, you see that bit about the new Sony sensors or are we saving that for tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to talk about some things tomorrow with Aaron Vatimir. Um or maybe even Friday, I'm not sure. Mark said, thanks for showing the connection. That's what I meant, yeah. Uh, LTD Dead Eye says, I don't like that I don't, I don't like that I don't like Zooms. <laughs> we'll make your assistant lazy. That You're talking about that monitor, I know. It's pretty good though. Um, what up, you Nick and Lou? Canon and uh, Photomere are gonna be added again. Waiting to, uh, they're waiting to buy the Sony A9 sensor. Um, I am what I am says, in the meantime, your wife in her YouTube channel is going to unbox a new gun. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's keep going, shall we? So I've got this box. What's that notification? Oh. Um, so I've got this new box that's just come today. So this is all small rig stuff. Um, total disclosure, I've paid for none of this, um, but it's certainly things that I'm interested in reviewing. Um, 
And I would have bought them anyway. Uh, well, I would have bought some of them, that's for sure. Uh, because now, you guys know that I love, my favorite video camera is still the A9. Now, the recently I reviewed cages for the A7 uh, III, but I wanted to get some um, L brackets and cages for my A9 because I use the A9 so much for video. I wanted to try that, like a cage and L brackets for that. So I asked Smorig if they'd send me some stuff and also another monitor holder. So they've sent me this stuff. So we'll go through it and I'll show you what it is. Now I will review them properly when I put them onto the camera and let you know how they work and stuff. But uh, let me open this up and we'll go through it. So the first one we're going to look at is... Um, this is a small rig cage for the Sony A9. Now we'll stick, I will stick the links down below where you can get this stuff. Um, and I have a small rig affiliate link now that um, I can put on. So if you are gonna buy any of the small rig stuff, uh, I really would appreciate it if you could buy it through my link. Uh, just to support me. Small rig don't pay me at all, but they do send me the stuff. And that's why I'm saying I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but I would be honest if I didn't like anything. Uh, but let me have a look. So this is the cage itself. Kerry's gonna have a heart attack when she comes home and she sees all these boxes because she's, she's gonna think I've been buying stuff. <laughs> I'm still in trouble from buying the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I, I haven't got over that yet, it feels nice. So this is the cage um, itself. I shouldn't have worn such a dark top actually. Uh, I'll put it on the camera so you can have a quick look uh, at what it looks like. Let me just open up the knife. Like I said, I will review it properly um, when we... I'm just going to find where the screwdriver is in this thing. I always get... Oh, yeah. Oh. Actually, I'll use this. It's all right. Then I can keep the knife out. So... So let's have a look. Like I said, I use the, I'm using the Ninja V a lot. Like I do use that an awful lot. Um, so I wanted a cage that, so I can stick uh, the camera into um, and have all the mounting points where I can stick things. So this is the cage itself. And like everything that Small Rig do, everything always just fits so beautifully. Like they really do fit uh, really beautifully uh, and then you can still access all your ports and things like that that you want to get to you know you've got complete access to get to everything like I said I'm not going to talk about this much because I'll review it uh, properly um, in the coming days so you can have a look at it uh, if you're interested in it so that's that anyway and that fits beautiful that seems like it's really nice uh, what else have I got now this is a left side grip. So let me just, I'll bring this up to here. So this is the left side grip. Let me open this up and I'll show you what it does. I think it's more for the um, L bracket actually, but I'll let you know when I open it up. This is like Christmas. <laughs> leave all these boxes in the kitchen for when Kerry comes home today um, and she's gonna she's absolutely gonna freak <laughs> oh there's a couple of screws there I better make sure I don't lose anything oh that's, yes oh that's fantastic now I think this fits with the L bracket I can't remember I've got to look at it again how it works now this gives you this fantastic grip that you can sit on uh, the outside of the camera. Uh, in this case, I think you could probably put it on that side with, a, with the screw there. I'm not sure um, where it'll, no, it does go on the left side. It goes on that side. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure it was for the L bracket though, but it just gives you something extra that you can grab onto. So I'll, like I said, I'll let you know how this works um, when I, um, actually you could even use it on there. It would sit on that one. The other part with that too that's really good is that you, um, get an Allen key that fits inside, so you're going to be able to uh, connect this and take it off. You also have a cold shoe mount. Uh, let me just see if I can get this to focus. You also have a cold shoe here. You can see there where the um, that little 
Allen key is, uh, so you can put the screws in, and I'm pretty sure that goes with the L bracket, and it really gives you a decent um, thing to hold on to. And because I handhold so much video, that's why I love these sort of handles and things like that, and you get all these extra mounting points that you can stick stuff on, which seems to be really good. So that's that one. Uh, what's in here? So this is the HDMI cable. So this little device here is just to hold the HDMI port in because when I'm using um, the monitor, the Ninja V, I like to hold the... The problem with Sony cameras is, is that they uh, only use the micro HDMI which can fall out all the time and it can wreck your whole footage. Um, so this will attach onto the sides down here. Somehow, I can't remember how it's done. Uh, it attaches through here, and then that will give you, uh, hold a, um, your HDMI lead in, um, and which is great, because then you don't get that problem of it falling out. Uh, so I do always use those when I'm uh, recording directly to the Ninja Vs. Um, so like I said, I'll show this when I do the review, because I'll have everything installed. Uh, so let me just put that down. Uh, next thing in the box is... What's this one? Ah, oh, safety rails. So these, I'll just take these out for a second and then I'll show you what else I've bought because I, I love this thing. Uh, mini quick release, NATO rail. And this one is a cold shoe mount. So cold shoe is going to stick on the top. So what that will give me, uh, the cold shoe itself is going to stick up here and then I'll have an extra cold shoe on the side. So that's what that's going to be for. Like I said, stay tuned for that. Uh, but this little device here is what really excites me because I love it. So let me open this up. So this little thing is a new rail that you use these. So what you do is I'll, on here, this is a NATO rail. I'll just take it out and show you. So this NATO rail, I've got two of them. I've got a smaller one and a larger one. That screws onto the top of your camera like that. And then this will just um, slide in uh, like that, I believe, or which way does it go? I'm not sure. Don't know. Oh, hang on, it might be tight. Go that way? I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I'm not sure how they work. I don't know. Oop. Yeah, I don't know. But it's sl they slide in, and then you can just take this off. So that's what's fantastic about that. So you can attach your monitor. Now the beauty then is that you can twist your monitor around backwards and forwards. And then if you don't want to take up so much space on your camera uh, with that, because the way that I've got it at the moment with that is it sits on permanently like that on the top and it's too big. But now I'm just going to be able to take that off and then I can use it just with a cage if I want to get rid of that. I bought two of these. I bought that one. Well, I didn't buy them, it got sent to me. And there's also a smaller one as well, um, which is this one here, I believe. Yeah, that's a quick release one. It's probably this one that I use. Um, so they're what I've got uh, for that. So let me just put these down so I can chat to you all. I can't wait to play with this stuff. I love the small rig stuff. Uh, let me get rid of that. So this particularly, I... When I saw they had this, uh, they've only just released this, um, this was incredible because just to be able to put your monitor onto that and then you can then tilt your monitor around, you can move it, you can spin it if you're doing selfies, uh, things like that, and that's just your lock to lock it onto the rail. Um, so because I'm using that um, Ninja V so much to do my recordings, to make something really easy like that uh, it really does make your life easier. Now there's one last thing I'll show you which is the L bracket, so let me take this off. I 
I'm definitely going to leave these boxes. <laughs> I'm going to leave them in the... I might leave them on the kitchen table. Just to see what Kerry says when she comes home. She wasn't happy when I bought the iPad the other day. Uh, so this is the L bracket. Now this L bracket says it fits the A7 III, the A7 um, R3 and the A9. Uh, so it fits all of those cameras. I like the L brackets because they're Arca Swiss compatible and that's what I love about them. Uh, and then obviously it comes, what I also like about them too, they come with a Allen key which sits inside. Let me just see if I can get that out though. It's magnetic so they're always hard to get out. It comes with its own Allen key which you can then tighten the uh, things up. So let me take that out. Alright, so this is the L bracket on, and like I said, I love these because they come with your Arca Swiss adapter already on there. So whether you want to go this way, whether you want to go that way, they're already there, and your battery compartment is really easy to access. So I really like the way that these work. The other thing too is, and like I said, I'll review them properly, you can undo that and make that move out. So if you need to tether and things like that and get into there, you can do that as well. Um, Form fitting is really nice. Uh, and then that's what that handle was for. So what do I do with that? Uh, so this handle attaches onto this so that you can then hold that onto that side uh, and it gives you a better grip on the camera, um, which seems really nice. There's two screw holes at the bottom, obviously, that you have to attach down to the two screw holes down here. Uh, and then you get that nice uh, grip, which is great for if you're hand holding uh, as well. So that's all of the parts. Like I said, I'll list them all down below anyway if you want to go and have a look um, at them. Uh, if you use my uh, affiliate link, that just takes you to small rig and then you just have to search for the parts. But I'll list all the parts underneath there so you can see what they are. Um, but fantastic. I mean, really good. I, like I said, I just love, I just love that small rig stuff. Um, let me put that away and then we can have a chat for a few minutes. Put that down there. Okay, so if you have any questions, fire away. Um, I'd like to see what people are saying. Um, where were we up to? Um, <laughs> I'm laughing at Michael saying he can't keep up with the new gear. Uh... Oh yeah, we'll make your assistant lazy. Here we go. Um, waiting for the news to buy the uh, Sony A9 sensor. Is that to say because you were Nikon? Um, Fedemix said, uh, oh look, someone tried to rebrand themselves like Manny Ortis, uh, except they won't change the fact that they are a Russian troll bot like Crapper Master. Who's that you talking about? Um, Langston says, uh, my branding was so bad, Fiverr, or what might be an up... Um, are these talking? I was thinking they're talking to someone else. Uh, Mark said, I did my unboxing the other day, the A9. Woohoo! Can't beat the A9. My A9 is still in the shop with Sony crap pro support. Oh no, that's terrible. What happened to it, Casper? Mark said, I had the A7R3 since it was released, but after using the A9 over the weekend, it simply blew me away. I know you, you just can't beat the A9. I agree with you. And I still think it's the best video camera that's out there. Um, I really do for if you're talking about full frame video on the Sony side of things. Um, Sam said, looking to buy a small rig cage for the A7 III. Please post the link. I will, uh, Sam, yeah, and I'd really appreciate that if you can buy that through that link. Uh, and I'll stick the exact model numbers as well. So if you use the link, uh, that will take you to small rig, and then um, I'll put down the code. You just search for the code and purchase it through there, and I think I'll get a couple of percent back or something or other. Um, what else? Um, my, are they talking to each other? Michael said, David, this isn't fair. I can't keep up with all of this new gear. <laughs> Michael, you that... that um, 
That Wi-Fi thing, though, you might really be interested in. I, I can't wait to try that Wi-Fi thing. From what I've seen on the reviews of that, it's fantastic, and that's what really interested me uh, about that. Um, Langson said, meanwhile, I'm trying to decide which lights to buy. Uh, Funimix said, I need a half cage for the Sony cams, so I, uh, so I don't have to hold the Ninja V. Yeah, that's why I like them, Funimix, because... Uh, and particularly remember, Sony, you shouldn't be putting them on the hot shoe. Uh, you're going to break it. Don't, don't put anything in the hot shoe, even a flash, you have to be careful with. Uh, because if it does hit, it's going to break the hot shoe. So you have to be so careful with that. So if you're going to do anything like that, you know, stick them on cages and stuff like that. Um, the L bracket's good too, because like if you have that grip, um, if you use that grip that's on this, uh, well, then you can obviously put the L, uh, the Ninja at the top on there because there is that coal hot shoe as well. Um, so you could do that too, um, which is great, I think. But yeah, avoid and and don't remember, don't forget too that these are the best things ever if you're using something like the Ninja because you can just spin the cage around. You can be facing it to you at the back. And then when you want to do it as a selfie, just turn it around and it's facing the opposite way because these completely rotate. I can't do it because they're really... Oh, there you go, I can. Yep, they, they work fantastic. Uh, like I said, this is just a new one that's come out. Um, but they're changing all the time. Uh... Yeah, just don't put anything on the hot shoe though, Photomeric, you'll break it. Uh, Langston says, looks like a snazzy cage. Yeah, it does, that one. I, I really like the, the look of that. It seems to have everything that you'd need on it. I just like having the ability to, because I'm, I'm doing videos so much now, I don't mind the extra sort of weight that the cage puts on there. I mean, they're very light anyway, but I just like the having the ability to bolt things on and stuff and not having to worry about using that coal shoe, uh, which, you know, it, is a real problem. Um, Mark said, small rig saved my camera the other day after sliding off a plastic case in my car boot and falling onto the road, not a scratch. Yep, they do protect your camera, that's for sure. Um, Langston says, what codec are you recording into the Ninja? Um, what was it? Oh, I haven't got a battery in it. I, th I think it was ProRes Langston. Do you want me to put a battery in and tell you? Let me know if you do and I'll, I'll find a battery and I can start it up. Um, Bill says, it's always fun to unwrap new gear. I know I love it. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Um, Casper says, they tried to charge me $400 to fix my peeling grip on the back of my A9. Wow, that's expensive. Um, Michael says, the problem with Sony cameras... Um, Casper said, uh, the past two times I've had something with them, it's, it's been nothing but b uh, BS, yep. Um, Photomeric says, I don't know ProRes, I think. Yeah, that's what I think I'm using, but I can, I can put a battery on it if you want me to check what I'm using. Um, don't let Kerry get hold of that leather, man. <laughs> Not until at least before I tell her that the stuff was free, I know. Uh, Michael said, Casper, ouch, I can uh, call for you. Oh, that, yeah, they're just talking to each other. Um, Shagoo says, when the angry photographer saw all this, he bought another copy of his last Fuji lens. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> uh, David, I feel like you're going to use that Tamron more than the Zoom for the uh, 2470. Look, like I said, if, if, um, if you want something that's a gimbal, uh, it particularly is an outstanding lens. That having... And look, it's only a matter of time before I, I made a joke today about Windsor 7200 coming up when I went to pick the Tamron up. But um, if if um, it's only a matter of time before the 70 to 200 comes out, I, I would think it's probably going to be you know sometime early next year or about the same time as now, the 70 to 200 will come out or about that focal range because then you've got the Trinity in, you know, you've got the 17 to 28, the, the uh, 28 to 75, and you'll have the 75 or whatever it is to 210 or whatever uh, they want to do it at. But then you've got a fantastic trio of lenses, which for wedding and event photographers is that perfect combination. Uh, 
and they seem to be fantastic lenses, and I'm sure the 70 to 200 will be as well. I'm also excited about looking at the Sigma lenses that they're going to send me, and that um, other lens, what I talked about before, um, the, oh, I can't remember. There's another lens that we're going to send me too. Uh, what was it? I'll tell you exactly. Um, it was, there's another lens I'd like to have a look at if I can get it, which is the um, Pets Val, I think it's called, uh, the Pets Val, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, the 55 Mark II has this really weird rendering, uh, so I'm going to have a look at that, and apparently it's outstanding sharpness, uh, and it's the SLR Magic um, I'm going to be looking at as well, um, it was the, I'll tell you exactly, it was, doo -doo -doo -doo. where was it? Oh. I'm just trying to see if I can find it. Um, no, all I know is it's the SLR Magic one. Uh, that's all I know. And then next after that, I'm going to start, I think I'm going to get some anamorphic lenses uh, for Sony that I'm going to be able to use as well. So the stacks of stuff that are on the horizon, uh, what I'll be uh, able to show you guys. Um, small rig equals Legos for cameras. I know, I think you're right. It really is fun to play with. I love it. And I did love Lego as well, actually. Um, I don't know why they call it small rig. After you add all that stuff, it's huge. Um, uh, where were we? It's jumped. I hate that. Oh, yeah, we were down here, weren't we? Um, this is a gadget overload. <laughs> Go to see the architect for drawing up more space. Um, you're going to cut your hand. Oh, no, I better put that. Where did I put that? Oh, no, it's down there. Um, I want a plate that goes between my Rowan S and the tripod and get uh, and get on it small rig. They'll they'll produce something because, like I said, I love that small rig adapter that I've got for the um, uh, Moser Air, which is this thing. You know, again, I love that. Uh, fantastic that handle that you can move to wherever you want it to put it. I've uh, got the coal shoe up the top. Uh, you've got all your mounting points here, and it just connects around the outside here that has all mounting points on it as well. Uh, I know they've done this for the Rowan S, and I think it's for the Crane as well. It might be the Crane 2 or something. I can't remember. It might be the Weebill. I, I'm not sure. But they keep making new stuff all the time. Ed said, morning David, I'm buying the A9 and I've seen it for £2,300. It's an online grey market. Uh, is it worth the risk? Well, it just depends, Ed. I don't usually buy grey market cameras, just, just for the fact that I like pro, uh, Sony Pro Support. Uh, they won't do it in Australia if it's a grey market camera. Um, so I'd pay the extra just to have it in Australia for the warranty um, and also to be able to use Sony Pro Support. Um, so for me, no. But if it's a big saving, uh, I'd say it, may be, it might be worth it. The only thing is just check, make sure that that company is reputable, you know, because you're probably going to have to send it back to them if something goes wrong. Um, but great price. Mark said the earlier versions of that L bracket had the wrong Allen key size and no rubber on the base. Yeah, I think that does have rubber on it. Let me just have a look. Because it's not moving, that's for sure. Um... Boy, does that magnet strong. I'll just undo it and see what it's got on the bottom of this one. Yes, it does. So this L bracket has rubber on the bottom. Let me just see if I can get that to focus. Uh, it's got rubber gaskets here and there. Uh, so it doesn't move because you tighten it and it, it holds it in place. Um, so that looks like it's solved that problem, Mark. Uh, Bill said, I have the older version of the iPad Pro 12. I take it everywhere. How much memory does yours have? I only bought the 256 one, uh, Bill, uh, because with the latest upgrade, um, I'm running iOS 13, so I have upgraded to iOS 13, and I can attach hard drives to it. Um, so I'm not fussed about it only having 512, um, sorry, uh, 256. 
um, gigabytes of memory uh, because of the fact that I can stick USBs in and also um, hard drives now on iOS uh, 12, at uh, 13 I mean. Um, but yes, it looks, it's amazing, it is so quick. It really is unbelievably fast. I've been surprised how fast it actually is. Uh, it's, it's beautiful, but it, you know, it all adds up because you've got to add the pencil. Um, you also have to add the keyboard, which I bought. I've just bought the dock to it as well, um, which is one that attaches on the side. Um, uh, the extended warranty, you know, Apple Care. It's amazing how much it all adds up when you start to buy the iPad. But I just want something like when I'm coming to the States with you guys in um, February, I want something that I can travel light with um, and I can um, I can um, not have to take a laptop. So that, that's what my goal is with this, is not to take the laptop anymore. And I'm going to try and push myself to using that instead of using my MacBook Pro. Um, because it seems to be that it has everything that I want. And iOS 13 really is a nice operating system. Uh, so I'll let you know how it goes anyway. Um, but it seems to be that it's, it's a beautiful, um, it really is a beautiful machine. I had the old Mac Pro, uh, sorry, the old um, iPad Pro, which was the 10 inch one, I think it was. So it's a couple of years old. Uh, so this probably will last me, you know, three years. Um, so it seems to be beautiful. The screen's beautiful. And with iOS 13, it's sort of taking it to another level. I've just bought a stack of apps um, on it. I bought Affinity. I bought Luna, Luma Fusion. Um, and there was an audio app that I bought as well. So I should be able to do all my video editing on it as well. There's going to be a learning curve, but I, I'm excited about that anyway. Um, Jerry said, I prefer the L back at for tripod use, yep, exactly. It gives you more flexibility when leveling the camera than just having it on the uh, tripod ball mount. The other thing too, it does protect your camera as well. And we all know about the Sony uh, weather sealing, particularly in the older cameras. Uh, if you use an L bracket, it takes that problem away of water getting into here because it will be sitting on the L bracket. So it's much safer if you're dealing with shooting in the wet. Um, and like I said, if, you, if you've got things like um, HDMI cables and things like that, or tethering, you can hold those in with the adapters as well. So it's, and it does give you a little bit of a better grip. Um, Peter says, awesome to see you live again. G'day, Peter, good to see you in here. Um, Peter's channel's growing like crazy. If you uh, haven't subscribed to him, check Peter out. He's doing so well. Photomir, uh, his channel is just going ridiculous. Um, it, it's crazy how many uh, you, uh, subscribers Phonomiac has now. Um, big shout out from London. Thanks, Kia. Jerry says, where's the Tamron 17 to 28? Right here. If you haven't seen it, there it is. Let me get it to focus. There's a little beauty. Ooh. 67 mil, so it's great. So it shares the same filter thread as the 24, uh, 28 to 75, and it also shares the, the same filter thread as the 24. So it means you've only got to buy NDs that fit that size, which is brilliant. Um, uh, Mark said, the software update for the iPad will make a big difference, like connectability to hard drives, transfer, and video, yep. Uh, that's I've been playing around with iOS 13 for a while and love it. It really does. And like uh, Eli has said there, it really makes it more like a computer. And it does, Eli, I agree with you. That's why I'm so excited about uh, doing it uh, or using it that way. Um, where were we? Jonathan said, what's your recommended gimbal lens on Weebill Lab for the A7 Mark III? I can't tell you, Jonathan, because that's one uh, gimbal that I haven't used. Um, but I still think it would probably be the Tamron I would recommend would be the best gimbal lens that's available. That's 17 to 28. I think that would be by far the best gimbal lens that's on the market at the moment. Um, JB says, confirm Sony RX announcement today. Yeah, I knew it would be an RX announcement, JB. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. It's another disappointment. Um, it's another camera we don't need. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I did. I did actually say that. Let me just come over to Sony Alpha Room. Are they talking about that new window? 
file, new window. Let me just go to Sony Alpha. I'll bring it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Because are they mentioning it? Uh, mentioning it? I'll have a look. Let me just see. Um, yeah, well, they're not saying anything about it yet. So where did you hear that? Because Sony Alpha Rumors aren't mentioning anything about that uh, at all. So there we go. Uh, let me just come back to here. I did pick JB that the next one will be the RX something though. Um, DZ Slacker says a used A7R is close to the A7 III price. Um, I know, it's it's it, the A7R III now, if you do want a cheap uh, high megapixel camera, uh, even if you waited a fraction longer, you're going to get an A7R III for under 2,000 United States dollars. That That is going to be a bargain of a camera because remember, you could buy the A7R III and say a Tamron 28 to 75, or you could get a 24G Master for the same price that you're paying for the um, A7R IV. So if you're not after 60 megapixels, uh, you might be able to get a fantastic A7R III uh, for really great money. Um, and that's the exciting thing when they bring new cameras out, that's for sure. Um, A7R3 is close to the A7 III in price, what would you buy? Um, I don't know, it's it's hard to say. I still think that the 24 megapixel size for me is the perfect uh, size. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a toss up. Probably if, the, if they get to the same price, you could buy the A7R III and then you could use it in crop mode and you're still getting 18 megapixels um, out of it. Um, so probably if the price gets to the same uh, with both of those, I would probably buy the R3 uh, over the A7 III because at least you can use it in crop mode. Uh, you do lose a little bit with focus though because the A7 um, III is slightly faster, uh, but the A7 R3 is still outstanding. So yeah, I'd probably get, if they were similar price, I'd get the A7 R3 and then at least you can have high res and use the lower res crop mode if you need to. And 18 megapixels is fine uh, for what I would ever probably want to do. Uh, but you're gonna probably find the A7 III will drop in price as well. Um, I'm gonna get it's ProRes. Yeah, I'm sure it was ProRes uh, that I was using. G'day mate, how you going? Everything, everything Man's on here as well. Uh, another great channel. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the Everything Man, um, make sure you go check his work out. He's, he's got this great sense of humor like Casey. So, um, you know, check him out, guys. There's some great people that are in here at the moment. Um, you know, they really are up-and-coming YouTubers uh, that I'm sure they're probably going to leave me in their wake um, shortly. Uh, so thanks for joining us, buddy. Final cut or bust? <laughs> I love final cut. Um... Tony Miles says, watching from LI in New York, I think that is. Uh, Kia says, used hammer on 28 to 75 on, on an A9 in anger at a party the other night. Low light performance was amazing. The only weak point was the 12 inch behind the camera. <laughs> uh, Michael says, I, I just want Sony to come up with the A7S3, oh, tell me about it, Michael, or even just an A7000. Give us something. Um, Everything man said, ah, iOS 13 is heaven sent. I know, how good is it? Uh, I'm really surprised. I did install it on my phone, but uh, it's not the same. The uh, iPad iOS 13 is way different to what you get on the phone. Uh, having the split screens, the way it works, your copy and pasting and everything, it really is just wonderful now. It's getting better and better. Um, Michael says, uh, Photomeric, I'm getting desperate. I almost bought a Nikon the other day. Well, wait, because they might release that 60 megapixel with 4K 60 and 10 bit, Michael. So who knows? Um, but I know I know how you feel, Michael. I'm the same. It's just getting ridiculous that we're having to wait, uh, you know, this long. Um, where were we? Oh, there, yeah. Um, Everything Man said, yeah, slightly buggy, but not a deal breaker. Yeah, I haven't had too many bugs show up though yet, uh, but it'll get better with each release. 
Um, and I love, like anything, being a bit of a geek in that regard. The second they bring out a public beta or whatever, I'm on it. <laughs> So, so I just jump in there and just hope everything works, and it, it seems to have, um, but it's super fast. I mean, really fast. Uh, Mark Frost said, wait, iOS 13 is out. Yeah, it's developer Mark, and that's what I'm using. I'm just using the developer release. I think it was up to version 4 uh, the other day. Um, Eli says, it is beta. It will be released publicly in September. Uh, Kia said, cancelled AK2000, weight is going to be an issue when I get a cage, so I got the Moser Air 2, yep. Uh, thanks Dave for the advice. The uh, Moser Air 2 is incredible, and that's what I'm saying, you'll never have uh, an issue with weight or anything on that Kia, on the Moser Air 2, it'll handle anything you throw on it, the Moser Air is, is unbelievable. Um, Photomeek says, I think I'll get my AK2000, yeah, you're, gonna, you're getting a review unit too, you're going to like it, Photomeek, it's a great gimbal. Um, just got FedEx label from LA, crap support team, they sent the A9 back FedEx, okay, um, hopefully it's fixed. Michael says, uh, my channel just hit an all-time high, 100,000, yes, that's right, 100 kids strong. Um, that's cool, Michael, 100k, woohoo! <laughs> um, Fatamiak says, you're crying about the measly rubber grip, get a life, he's talking to Casper. Uh, what lenses do you expect from Sony? Well, I think, look, if you're talking about any lenses that they need to release, they do, I believe, they need to release some wide angle. And when I'm talking about a wide angle, I'm saying a 12 millimeter prime. I think that's what they, uh, what I'd like to see them release, is something like a, a 12 millimeter fast prime. Uh, and also say, look, I, I don't think I need it because I love the 135 so much, but the 105, uh, I think they were talking about 1.4 also would be an amazing lens. But Sony now have got so many good lenses, they're not really missing a lot in the whole range now. Um, so there's not a lot that I'd like to see. I really would like to see a wide angle prime though. That's, that's what I'd like to see. Uh, Dwayne says, uh, what's your opinion on the best gimbal? I'm leaning towards the Rowan S or, or SC. But I'm new to video, so I'm not sure. I have the 51.4, the 85 GM, and the Tamron 28 to 75. Um, well, I haven't used the Rowan S, um, so I can't tell you about that. I, I, all I can tell you about the gimbals that I've used. Uh, my favourite gimbal of all time, what I've ever used, is the Moser Air 2. That's my favourite gimbal. But I do love. Also, the AK2000, the uh, FuerTech, that's also brilliant. That would handle everything that you're talking about, Dwayne. Um, yeah, it just depends on really what you want to use. Um, I noticed, um, who is it the girl reviewed it this morning I watched? I, I, is it Ayatollah Visuals? And she said it was a little bit hard to... Um, to balance compared to the others, I suppose it's just because it's so different. But I love the controls on this, and I, you know, I like the way you can control everything with a touch screen. Uh, the Rowan's, uh, the new Rowan doesn't have that, um, but it, then it has the tracking which you may use. I think it's probably a bit of a gimmick though, um, because you've got to stick the camera on top and stuff like that. And I really don't know if you'd ever use it really, but. Um, my two favourites are definitely the Moser Air 2, which if you need to carry anything big, it will handle whatever you throw at it, and it's got great controls. I love the way you can just control it, everything from the dial, even your speed, uh, just by racking the, the wheel, and the, the FireTech uh, is great too. I like the Moser Air Cross, but I, I, uh, I like the, the AK2000 more than that now, but I haven't tried the new Air Cross 2, which is out. Um... What else have we got here? Jamie says, with the unexpected release of the A7 Mark IV, uh, could we see the A7 IV soon? Yes, well, you know what? That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, what Sony have done, because I was a bit shocked with the A7R4 coming out, they may release an A7 IV as well. The confusing thing about this is, and this is what I'd love you guys to even talk about in the chat down below, but Sony in those cameras that have released have only said that there's going to be one camera that has uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now, seeing that the Mark IV has got 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, what does that say about what Sony's going to release with the next cameras? That's confused me, and I'm not sure 
uh, if everyone understands that com thing, because surely if they were going to bring out an A7S uh, or an A9 in those cameras, it would have five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now there's only one being released that has that Wi-Fi component. So what do you think? Now we know one camera is going to be, um, is, is the R4. We know one camera is going to be an RX camera. So there's still two models which are unlisted. So what are they going to be? Is one of those going to be an A7R4 that doesn't have the 5G Wi-Fi? I don't know. And is one going to be an A7000 that hasn't got it? I, I don't know. It's just an interesting interesting scenario. Um, <laughs> Michael's called the everything man, the Italian stallion. I love it. Um, what else have we got? Jonathan said, would you please create video on the best Sony FE lenses and pairings of lenses for beginners like me? I have done some videos like that before, Jonathan, of talking about what I use, but I should now do an update because I have got new lenses, yeah. Um, TC Production says, and they were not in short, oh, I'm not sure what that was about. Um, well, Sean Creation says, everything man, what's up bro, love your channel. Yeah, I love it too, it's a great channel. Jeffrey said, uh, show us your iPad Pro 12 Point nine, David. Do you want to see it? I'll go and get it if you want me to show you. Um, what's good? Appreciate you. Casper uh, said, they refuse to fix it unless I pay. Oh, you're t still talking about your camera. Michael says, I want to sell my FS7. Dump them right now uh, because they are getting so close tech-wise with mirrorless cameras. Yeah, I can understand that, Michael. The other thing too is, if an A7S III does come out that has amazing specs, uh, the FS7s may drop in price. So it might be a good time to offset one if you can but the problem is you may be stuck in the meantime if you haven't got something to replace it um casper says i think they're getting be oh, i'm not sure he's talking about sony i think there um damn bro uh honestly feel for you no i'm not sure what you do maybe david has some advice my apologies on the situation what are we talking about there have i missed something <laughs> i'm not sure if i missed something um have we got oh my god apple wants 149 au to download the beta no they don't charge you money mark for uh the beta it's free i did it myself just the other day all right i'll grab the ipro hang on stay there jeff i'll have to run into the studio have a chat amongst yourselves for a second So, um, I was tossing up between getting the smaller one. Um, I was tossing up between getting the smaller one and the larger one. But I found that I was a little bit worried because the other one I had was the 10 inch one. And look, I just thought sometimes it's just not big enough. I think I've got a 15 inch Mac Pro. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a 15 inch Mac Pro. So I wanted a, a size that's big enough so I can man manipulate images and, and so you do video and stuff like that and also use the dual screen setup and stuff like that. So I wanted a, a larger one that I could do that with. Um, so yeah, I went for the 12.9 one and I love it. Uh, fantastic. I mean, it's just so fast. Like it's, it's ridiculous how fast this is. Now the apps that I'm going to try and I'll, I'll tell you which ones that they are. I've got liquid text because I've found that that's going to be great for my YouTube channel because it seems to be where I can do a lot of research and things like that. That liquid text uh, is amazing. Uh, they're expensive apps, though. All these ones are pretty expensive for iPad apps, but, you know, they're not cheap. The other one that I got was um, 
the, uh, and I haven't even looked at it yet, it's Affinity Photo. Uh, was the other one that I've got. So I've got to go through all the tutorials about that to see how that works. But remember, Photoshop are also going to be coming out with an app soon as well. Um, the other one I'm using is Luma Fusion. So that's going to be the app that I'll be doing all my video editing on. Um, and again, I had to pay for that. So they're not that cheap. And then I've also bought um, this, well, it was free, but then you had to upgrade it if you wanted to use it. It's called uh, Hakusi, I think it is, or Hakusi or something. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing the audio in. Um, but it's, it looks like it's, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And it really is a laptop replacement. The keyboard is brilliant. Um, really nice to use. And the pen, you know, I just love the way the pen works now. I mean, it's magnetic and it seems to work really good with little latency at all. So I think it's going to be, um, brilliant for me to use. The audio sounds really great through this. And I've bought the adapter um, that clicks onto the side into your USB. So it clicks onto the side here and it has um, HDMI. It's got, uh, I think it's two USB ports, um, one USB-C port and a headphone adapter uh, on it as well. So, and that just clips on the side uh, through here. Uh, and then, you know, you can just be completely uh, walk around or whatever you want to do. So it seems like it's really nice. Um, you know, not too big once you fold it away. I mean, it's not too big when you look at it like that, but it, it's a decent sized screen that I think I'm going to be able to do um, all of my editing on. And, th and that's why I'm saying I want to grab something that I can get rid of the laptop, travel more portable. The sound is unbelievable. I mean, the sound from these is incredible, but performance wise, this is actually as quick as a MacBook Pro. The, it, not the, probably the latest ones, but it's, it's as quick as some of the MacBook Pros out there. It's outstanding. Uh, and, you know, just the way you can do your split screens on this, that's why I wanted to go for the bigger one, because you can have sc uh, split screens open and they can be workable. Uh, the 11-inch one, I found when I looked at them, when I did uh, split screens and stuff, uh, that... It just wasn't large enough to use split screens effectively, and that's what I loved about using this. But, you know, it's just brilliant. I mean, I love it. I really love it. Um, so uh, that's going to be my traveling, and I think I'm going to use that um, for most things. I'm going to try and use it extensively and not touch my laptop. So that that's my goal with that one, is to... Um, you know, use it as a laptop replacement. I'll let you know how it goes. I am going to have to learn to use that new software, though. Um, I, I really wish uh, Final Cut was there. But from what I've seen, Luma, Luma Fusion looks very close to what uh, Final Cut is. Um, and apparently the editing speed that you can output from these 4K video files, it'll do 4K 60 in real time. Uh, it's incredible. And you're dealing with an iPad, and it will do 4K 60. Um, in, unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. I think it's because everything too, the software is so controlled, it's so tight and integrated. Um, you know, so what you're getting is you're getting this machine that is is really beautiful to use. So yeah, um, it is like Christmas, Ryan. Yeah, Kerry wasn't that happy I bought that, but <laughs> and I bought a big brick. Um, so the I'll tell you which, um, just in case if you're interested, I'll show you which uh, thing I bought for the um, adapter on the side just in case if anyone wants to get the same thing. I paid for these myself, so I didn't, you know, I paid for all of that side of it. Um, what was it that I got? So I'll, I'll tell you. So I bought, there's a couple of things that I bought this morning. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can tell you which battery I bought because I bought this big brick thing that I'll show you. So I bought this, let me just move this over. Uh, I bought this thing this morning. It's, it's called uh, the, uh, it's the hyperdrive. Um, that's the thing that I purchased. So this isn't the battery actually, this is the um, USB thing. Now it's, um, like I said, it's got the HDMI through here. You've got your USB-C there. Then you've got your standard SD cards and your micro SD or yeah, your micro SD like what's in the DJI Rowan. Uh, uh, your DJI Mavic and stuff. And then you've also got uh, a USB port here and then your microphone socket. Now it just sits onto the side of the iPad so it fits beautifully. So you can see here how it sits on and there's a lip that um, 
actually goes over the front of your iPad and you can buy these in space gray or the silver so they match perfectly. Um, you can see the lip there. That's what stops it from jangle, uh, jingling around um, on, your, uh, on your computer on the iPad itself. And you can see how the color matches down here uh, to be the same on both. So that's what I've just bought. So I bought that um, because this will, the iPad 12 point, well, both the iPad Pros will go to a uh, 4K uh, monitor. So it will output to a 4K monitor and give you a 4K footage. Uh, and the other thing that I purchased was um, this. Let me just see if I can find uh, the battery bank that I bought. Uh, where is it? Um, I only got that this morning, so it should be near the top somewhere. Here we go. I bought... Uh, what was it? I'm just trying to see if I can find what it was called. Uh, Frankie's order... Com Information. Oh yeah, this one. I'll, I'll have to re uh, search it so I can find it and show you. Um, copy. All right, and I bought this uh, this morning for my travels and stuff. Um, let me just see if I can open it. Now, does it show your photos? Yeah. So I bought this this morning. Uh, it's called the Anchor Power Core, and it's a, a 201. Oh, well, that's interesting. Go away. Um, it's actually um, how big is this thing? It's a. I think it's. I don't know. It doesn't say. But you can. I, I believe it'll charge your um, thing up around about eight times or something, and it even do a MacBook Pro a few times as well. Does it say how many? It's a 2000 mAh portable charger. Yeah, so it's pretty big. I mean, it's big, but I wanted something that I can uh, travel with me like when I come to the States in Feb, and if I haven't got power or whatever, and I want to edit on the go and do all different things, uh, that I can use that as well. So I've bought that adapter, and I've also bought this as well. Um, and this will charge up. You can run two uh, things at the same time. It has your, new, your normal USB ports, two of them, and you've also got your USB port as well. Uh, you can charge it while you're, you're running power out as well, I believe. Um, so, yeah, um, so that's that what I've bought. Uh, so I'm pretty well set up with it now. Like I said, I bought the pen. Uh, I bought that HDMI thing on the back because, we, like I said, with iOS 13, you can run um, hard drives and things like that from it. So that's the beauty of having that USB-C hub uh, on there, which is wonderful because, you know, it gives me that option to um, be able to... Um, is that coming up? I don't know. Yeah, it gives me that ability to be able to run drives straight in and things like that. So, you know, that, that's fantastic. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting that. So I think I'm pretty well set up now. You can even run a mouse on your, uh, iOS 13 as well. So if you did want to run a mouse, you can even do that as well. Uh, so it's... it's uh, it's good. Casper <laughs> said he's trying for Anchor products. No, I purchased it, Casper. They're not going to send me anything. Um, what else have we got? Uh, D, uh, it's like I said, the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi was to market wireless tethering uh, with a new app. The camera is for high-end studio portraits necessary for 120 megabyte raw files. Um, yeah, but the interesting thing is, though, surely the A9 would have that. You would think the A9 is going to have that because that's a type of camera that could benefit from sending those files down quickly like that. Um, <laughs> Michael said you just filled your sponsors' obligations. They're not sponsoring, Michael. I had to pay for them. Um, that's why I've got the emails on there to show you I've paid for them. <laughs> they didn't come for nothing. I had to pay that. Pay that. Oh, I've got to tell Kerry about that yet. So I think it was around about two hundred and fifty dollars I spent on those accessories this morning. Believe it or not. Um, David's bringing in the dough with these new vendors. I'm not. I had to pay for those. The other stuff I didn't pay for, but I did pay for that battery and the um, uh, and the HDMI grip. Um, can you use the HDM uh, the iPad as a HDMI input? I don't know. Uh, I have to work. You might be able to with iOS 13. I'm not sure. 
Um, Michael said the iPad looked really nice. Yeah, I love it, Michael. I, I adore using that. I've only been playing with because I got it Monday, I think, uh, or it's Sunday. Sunday. Um, and I've only just finished setting it up. Uh, like, I've got to learn all the new software now, but it, it looks like it's beautiful to use. Um, Marge says, you are going to love LumaFusion. It is written and developed by two develop editors from Media 100 during the late 90s. Interesting. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it looks like it's really good. Casper um, says, my old 12.9 iPad Pro always would do 4K editing. Thanks, Casper. Uh, yeah, and it looks like the new one is, is going to be really fast from what I've seen the reviews of it. Casper said, doorbell rings. <laughs> Here you go, David, 20 new Anika chargers to try. There's a couple of things that I'm still waiting on. I'm waiting on a battery charger that is going to be pretty exciting that uh, they've contacted me about that charges the Z batteries. Uh, I won't talk about that until I get it. Um, and there was another thing that oh, I can't remember. There's a couple of other things that people have been contacting me about. I'll only ever... Uh, take things for free if, if I'm really interested in them and that's the thing um, I wish they had given me those two products because it would have saved me 250 bucks um, but I did buy them um, so yeah um, Shea Creation says um, David TC Productions got this two got his two A7 and three lenses stolen at a wedding venue oh no he had no insurance oh no that's awful uh, any advice? Uh, get insurance. Uh, that's why I have insurance and I wouldn't go anywhere without it uh, because of that problem. Oh, it's awful. Michael said, David, uh, look up IDX batteries, man. They have twice, they have one, uh, they have nice one USB D taps, uh, one and two made for cameras, but you can use them for anything. I'll have to look them up, Michael. Um, video and sound are out of sync. What again? Are they out of sync again? Has anyone else noticed that? Uh, oh, you have lag. Did that just start, Mark? It must be a YouTube thing. iPad looks gorgeous. Can you use the pen in Photoshop? Yes. Uh, yes, you will be able to. YouTube is blocking your feet. <laughs> I know. All right, guys, if YouTube's lagging that much, I'm out of here. Did that just start? Let me know, though. Did that only just start, or has it been for the whole time? It might be because I've opened a few windows and stuff and it's it's just spat the dummy, I don't know. Um, did it just start, guys? Just let me know before I finish uh, this, just so I'd like to know. Has it only just come up with this uh, slowing down? I can't see anything about the health. Let me just see. It's saying the health is good. I'm not sure. Just mention in the chat um, whether it's just started. So if I talk now, one, two, three, four, is the audio still in sync or is it out of sync now? Oh, just a few minutes ago, that's weird. It was probably uh, spat the dummy because I'd said I paid for something. <laughs> you, have ten un you have 10 windows in my face, I love it. <laughs> All right guys, I better go because I'm going to be um, putting this, uh, all this stuff, these boxes in the kitchen because Kerry's going to be home in around 15 minutes. So I've got to go put the boxes on the table uh, because I wanted to see the boxes all over the table. Plus, I've got to play with all this stuff. I've got so much stuff I want to play with. I just wanted to give a good unboxing with you. Like I said, if you are interested in the uh, those products, uh, I haven't got an affiliate link for the um, the Sinai. That was just sent to me, but I'll, I'll find the link that that can be purchased through. Um, and I'll also put, it's still out of sync, is it? I'll also put the, um, we only see your screen and not your face. Oh, oops. Um, I'll also put the link for Small Rig down the bottom as well uh, in the description as well. So um, I'll, uh, if you can support me, if you want to buy any of that Small Rig stuff. I will do reviews in the coming um, days though for, to show how all the products work properly. So I will review them properly. Uh, so you'll be able to see how they work uh, when they're on their cameras. All right, guys, that's all. Uh, I will be with Aaron tomorrow. Um, so normal time on Aaron's channel. Uh, it'll be, um, it's, it's, I think it's nine, It's 10 o'clock here. It's the normal time that I come in on Friday, whatever time that is in, in LA and New York. I think it's about 8 o'clock New York time or 9 o'clock New York time, I think. Uh, so I will be on with Aaron in the morning. Uh, so hopefully I can see you then. All right, guys. Catch you all. Thanks for joining me with the unboxing. Um, it was exciting. Now I'm going to go and play with them. 
uh, and I'll see you all for the next video. Bye everyone.